Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning in to AMTV Alternative Media Television. It's of course Tuesday, August 5th, 2014. I put out a breaking video yesterday titled Ebola Outbreak. Critical questions about the pandemic. And of course this raises a lot of fears and important questions are being asked and some debated. And one of the most important questions is, is the Ebola virus airborne? Now, of course, the CDC, federal government, our government here in the United States, governments in Africa and around the world want to calm and quell fears and tell us that the virus isn't airborne. And the virus that most people associate Ebola with, the Zaire strain, is technically not airborne. But that's assuming that this new recent virus, which has now been the worst, and we, this has been the worst case in history, in modern history that's killed almost a thousand people and growing and is popping up not just in airports in central London but even potentially cases in New York City is trying to address and answer the question whether or not this can be transmitted through the air and there's a couple things I want to point out to you first and foremost if this is a new strain and this is a new type of the virus then there is an increased likelihood that this could potentially be an airborne disease. Especially, as I point out in this video, if this is a engineered weapon, uh, some type of biological warfare that has been manufactured potentially by a rogue state or government to kill off millions and millions of people. Now, of course, the federal government isn't going to tell you the truth. I mean, if they knew we were beyond the point of no return and that millions of people were going to die, they wouldn't issue a warning. They would just buy more time and they would try to quell panic for as long as possible while they slipped down into their bunkers and prepared for a worst case scenario. Scenario, You're not going to get the truth at all. And that's the bottom line. And the bottom line also being is you can't trust your government. Your government isn't here to save you, nor are they here to help you. They're only here to help themselves. And I answer a question, I was going through the comments earlier, and I really appreciate all of your comments. I do read quite a bit of them, as much as I can, uh, as I post our videos daily. And I responded to one of the comments, this is from a subscriber who says, airborne, not in the strictest clinical definition. It may spread through the air if suspended in airborne water droplets. That theory has yet to be reproduced in a second lab, so remains theoretical. It could be airborne for all they know. And I respond, I said, I should, I should have used the word potentially airborne in the closing argument of this video. Thanks for pointing this out. But I did dig up a few articles that suggest the Ebola virus, especially a new strain, could very likely be airborne. This could especially be true if the recent outbreak, again, has been engineered as a weapon of war used in biological terror. And for all we know, this, is, this could be the likely case. Now, there was a couple of reports that were dug up, also corroborated uh, with, by the Drudge Report. Uh, a study done by Canadian scientists to say the transmission of infected piglets that were inoculated with the Zaire form of the disease had somehow mysteriously transferred Ebola and the virus and they're not sure how this happened leading us to believe that the virus is potentially airborne even the Zaire version not to mention a manufactured bioterror strain could be potentially be transferred through the air uh, and here we have the article from pigs to monkeys Ebola goes airborne when news broke that Ebola virus had resurfaced in Uganda investigators in Canada were making headlines of their own with research indicating the deadly virus may sp spread between species through the air. The team, comprised of researchers from the National Center for Foreign Animal Disease, the University of Manitoba, and the Public Health Agency of Canada, observed transmission of Ebola from pigs to monkeys. Again, this remains a mystery. Uh, this was an article in 2012. They first inoculated a number of piglets with the Zaire strain of the Ebola virus. Ebola Zaire is the deadliest strain with mortality rates of up to 90%. The piglets were then placed in a room with four Sinomulgus macaques, a species of monkey commonly used in laboratories. The animals were separated by wire cages, so they physically separated the inner species to prevent direct contact between them. Within a few days, the inoculated piglets showed clinical signs of infection indicative of Ebola. In pigs, Ebola generally causes respiratory illness and increased temperature. Nine days after infection, 
all piglets appear to have recovered from the disease. But within eight days of exposure, two of the four monkeys showed signs of Ebola infection. Four days later, the remaining two monkeys were sick also. It is possible that the first two monkeys infected the other two, but transmission between non-human primates has never before been observed in a lab setting. Now, while the study provided evidence and transmission of Ebola between species is possible, researchers still cannot say for certain how that transmission actually incur occurred, meaning they do not know. They're not 100% sure that it's not airborne, that this cannot be spread through the air. You know when you're traveling in an airplane, you've got the recirculated air, and you. I know myself, personally, I likely usually get sick when I travel, when I'm flying from state to state uh, because of the recirculated air. And I'm going to read you also a report uh, issued by the CDC that is actually worried about the same things we're talking about right now. Now, there are three likely candidates for the route of transmission. It can be either airborne, in droplet form, or fomites. Airborne and droplet transmission both technically travel through the air to infect others. The difference lies in the size of the infective particles. Smaller droplets persist in the air longer and are able to travel farther. These droplets are truly airborne. Larger droplets can neither travel as far nor persist for very long. Now, fomites are inanimate objects that can transmit disease if they are contaminated with infectious agents. Uh, in this study, a monkey's cage could have been contaminated, for example, when workers were cleaning a nearby pig cage. If the monkey touched the contaminated cage surface and then the mouth or eyes, it could have been infected. Author Dr. Gary Kobinger suspects that the virus is transmitted through droplets. This would mean that the virus, the Zaire strain, is airborne. This is not what the mainstream media is telling you, folks. He says, not fomites because evidence of infection in the lungs of the monkeys indicated that the virus was inhaled. So even though there is quite a bit of evidence to indicate that the disease is not airborne, this is not entirely agreed upon the scientific community. This, this report by the Disease Daily from healthmap.org and a study done by the National Center for Foreign Animal Disease by Canadian researchers begs to differ, meaning they don't know. I mean, for God's sakes, folks, they thought the world was flat not too long ago, and then it turned out that it wasn't. Okay, so there's so much that we don't know about this disease, especially if this is a new, virulent, violent strain. It could potentially be a biological terror event instigated by a rogue nation. Uh, it could be instigated and, and propelled uh, by terrorists, for all we know. Maybe they found a weak spot in West Africa, and they've engineered the disease to destabilize the global economy and kill off millions. I mean, this would be the equivalent of hitting a home run. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. So we don't know is the bottom line. Uh, this report I encourage you to read. Also, transmission of Ebola virus from pigs to non-human primates. You can read the scientific report done by these Canadian researchers. Also, a statement released by the CDC Centers for Disease Control and Prevention talking about the disease. Again, they want to quell a panic. Even if the government knew that millions of people were about to be slaughtered by this disease, they're not going to warn you. They're going to buy as much time as possible, and then they're going to go down into their bunkers while the rest of us get slaughtered. That's just the bottom line. You know, your government is the one warning about biological attacks day in and day out, telling us, you know, we've got to be scared of a code red at any moment. We've got to be scared of Al-Qaeda and the Durka Durka boogeyman. It, it, our own government tells us to be fearful about this, but they're, they're just going to quell any fears for now, even though they have no idea whether or not this recent Ebola outbreak is potentially airborne, and it very likely could be. There was also a great report put out by Alternative Media fellow Paul Joseph Watson, who says, despite repeated assurances that the Ebola virus cannot be transmitted via airborne particles, the CDC is concerned about the very outcome and has directed airline staff to take steps to prevent the spread of infectious material through the air. Isn't that interesting? I mean, why would the airlines and why would the CDC issue a statement fearing that this could be this disease could be spread through the air if it wasn't possible if it wasn't a potentially airborne disease i mean if you can just get it by touching people etc and you have to be exhibiting symptoms and why would they have you wear masks why would the cdc be concerned about an airborne strain 
Again, folks, what do they know that we don't? What does the government know that we don't? What are they hiding? What does the Obama administration know that we don't? Why are they transferring Americans back to the states with the freaking strain? Why? Are they trying to kill us off? Are they, in try are they trying to infect millions of people? I mean, again, all of these are very important questions, and especially if this new strain is an engineered or manufactured strain used as some kind of biological terror attack, it could very likely and would be intended, I, I would assume, I would assure you, uh, by those behind it to be an airborne transmission. Of course, the kill rate would be much more effective and much higher and a much more efficient attack. Uh, on global populations if it was in fact airborne and they would definitely go for that potentially that potential type of strain uh, also another article here says it's nearly impossible to get Ebola in New York so why is everyone freaking out well for good reason because again we don't know the truth we're not getting the truth and we need to be asking critical questions about the disease about Ebola why this is the worst case we've seen in recorded history, why there's almost a thousand people dead, while this is spreading from country to country, uh, originating in West Africa, from Liberia to Sierra Leone to potentially the Ivory Coast, and now back here to the United States. We've seen cases, potential cases in London with a older lady in her 70s collapsing and dying on the tarmac upon arrival from Sierra Leone. We've had potentially warnings coming from New York City and the story is just snowballing. So the bottom line is, folks, we don't know the truth. We don't know if Ebola is, in fact, not able to be transmitted via airborne transmission. Okay, there's been a lot of reports and a lot of studies done that say the exact opposite. And we all need to take this into consideration. I'm Christopher Green. Get this out everywhere. Make it viral, hard-hitting and in your face. And click the link below to support our sponsor.